use the determinant to determine whether the following set of vectors is linearly independent and explain. So to get us started here, let's recall that we know that if the determinant of a matrix is zero, then the columns of matrix A are linearly dependent, and the, the rows of A, which are equivalent to the columns of A transpose, are linearly dependent. So what I'm going to do to get us started here to compare, we can let matrix A be defined by the column vectors V1, vector V2, vector V sub 3, and vector V sub 4. And from here, we can state that, therefore, A transpose is the matrix defined by the row vectors V1, V2, V3, vector V4. So this is just to remind us that we can either use matrix A or A transpose to find the determinant and thus determine if these vectors are linearly independent or dependent. So just for fun, we'll use A transpose. So we are going to row reduce. A transpose augmented with the zero vector to echelon form to compute our determinant. So using A transpose, we have our first row is 3, 5, negative 6, minus 4. Our second row is 2, negative 6, 0, 8. Row 3 is negative 2, minus 1, 3, 0. And our fourth row is 0, 0, 0, 3. Again, we are augmenting this with the 0 vector. And so let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. And we just want to note before we begin to be mindful that the row operations, so I'm abbreviate, the row operations will affect the determinant of this matrix. So we'll want to make note of that as we begin. So looking at our given matrix here, if we start with the first pivot, three, we would end up with fractions, which we'd like to avoid if possible. So looking at our second row, we can use this second row here to eliminate the entry below it simply by combining. So we'll start by doing R2 plus R3 to attain the new third row. And we'll make a love note here to ourselves as it's combining so this has no effect on our determinant. And so when combining these, the first row is still 3, 5, negative 6, minus 4, R2 is still 2, minus 6, 0, 8, and then we have 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 6 minus 1 is minus 7, 0 plus 3 is 3, and then 8 plus 0 is 8, and the fourth row is still 0, 0, 0, 3, and again, so actually fortunately here if we look at our second row, we have a scalar multiple of 2. So to reduce this, we'll multiply the second row by a factor of one half. So this is equivalent to, and again, since we're scaling here by a factor of one half, we need to multiply the matrix by two. And this leaves us with three, five, negative six, minus four. Row two becomes one, minus three, zero, four. The third row is still 0, negative 7, 3, 8, and our fourth row is still 0, 0, 0, 3. Mm. So at this point, since we have a 1 in the first position of row 2, I'm going to interchange the second row with the first row, and we'll put the first row in the second row's position. And again, since we, have, or since we are interchanging rows here, we want to keep in mind that this new matrix needs to be multiplied by a negative for the determinant. So this is now negative 2 multiplied by 1 minus 3, 0, 4. We have 3, 5, negative 6, minus 4. 
and then row 3 and row 4 are still the same. 0 of negative 7, 3, 8, 0, 0, 0, 3. All right, so now our first pos pivot position is 1, and it will be easier to simplify the entry below. So we can do minus 3 times the first row plus the second row to attain the new second row. And this is combining so that there is no effect here on the determinant. And so we are left with negative 2 multiplied by the matrix. Our first row is still the same. 1 minus 3, 0, 4. We have negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Positive 9 plus 5 is 14. 0 minus 6 is minus 6. And we have negative 12 minus 4 is minus 16. And then our third and fourth row is still the same. 0, negative 7, 3, 8, 0, 0, 0, 3. And so looking at this matrix, we realize that we have redundant rows. So we make a little love note here to ourselves that R2 and R3 are dependent on each other. They're scalar multiples. We can see that the second row is equal to 2 times the third row. And we're ready to make our final conclusion. So we can say that therefore the rows of A transpose, which are equivalent to the columns of matrix A, are linearly dependent. which lets us know that the determinant of matrix A is equal to zero. Again, this is not a unique solution. We could have also row reduced matrix A with our zero vector and found similar results. We can also verify that the determinant of matrix A is in fact zero by applying the definition or by applying cofactor expansion.